Welcome to the teaching ministry of David T. Demola. Open your heart to receive as Pastor Demola teaches the uncompromised Word of God. Okay, I'm done. I'm finished. Did you get enough? How many want more? How many want more? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. How about Psalm 34, 15? Huh? The eyes of the Lord are upon or over the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. Well, you see, Pastor, it says righteous. You see, it says righteous. See, the Bible says there's none righteous. No, not one. Do you know that people don't know how to quote that? That's a quotation from the book of Romans. Do you know what the book of Romans says, Brother Steve? Do you know what it says? For it is written, which means the apostle Paul was quoting an Old Testament rule. There is none righteous, no, not one. And it's a quotation from two places in the psalm. I think Psalm 64 and one other psalm. It's a quotation from that. It has nothing to do with the new covenant relationship we have with God where it says he hath made him to be sin for us, 2 Corinthians 5.21. He hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. <laughs> so listen to me. And then you got that old, you got that quotation people saying, well, you know, our righteousness is as filthy wrecks. Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah. How, wait a minute, wait a minute. How could your righteousness be like filthy rags when you have the righteousness of God in Christ? Amen. Are you kidding me or what? Amen. Somebody's got to get their brain working. Don't you ever say to somebody, oh, you know, there's none righteous, no, not one. We're all filthy rags. You are, are you saved? Yeah. I dare you not to ever say again, you're filthy, you're yeah. filthy rags, then you're unrighteous. Amen. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. He made you to be righteous. You didn't earn it. He gave it to you. So stop saying that you're filthy rags. Yeah. I hate that. Amen. Having said that, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Yeah. Yeah. So when I say, Jesus, he goes, ah! Yeah. That must be my son, David. Yeah. Yes, sir. yes, yes, yes. What can I do for you, David? What can I do for you, David? What can I do for you, David? I got this mountain of bills, Jesus. I got this mountain of bills. I'm a giver. Oh, let's see, you got to put that in. I'm a giver. I'm a giver. I'm a giver. Therefore, I come under your covenant of blessing. Come on now. The righteous cry, the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their affliction. My God. Psalm 34, 15 in the message says, God keeps an eye on his friends. <laughs> Tell somebody that God keeps an eye on his friends. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have my phone? Oh, okay. Don't you take it home with you. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> okay. Got to show you something. I want you to see number three, preferential treatment. Everybody say, everybody say preferential treatment. Oh, say it like you mean it. Say preferential treatment. In Esther chapter 2 and verse 9, and I'm going to try to see if I can bring it up here. See, I'm using modern technology today. Hello? Just to show you that I do have stuff, you know. The Bible says that out of all the people that were in the kingdom at that point, it's a whole story. The book of Esther is an amazing book. But one of the things that it reveals is 
that God knows how to treat his people very special. Oh, how do I tell you this so you get it? When you become the object of God's favor, he treats you very special. I wish that you get this into your vocabulary and tell somebody, God treats me very special because I'm the object of his affection. He loves me so much that his favor is all over me. Come on, I want you to tell somebody that. Come on, come on. In the New International Version, Esther chapter 2 verse 9 says, she pleased him, that is the king, and won his favor. And immediately he provided her with her beauty treatments and special food. He assigned to her seven female attendants selected from the king's palace and moved her and her attendants into the best place in the harem. My God, somebody say amen. Amen. So I see a couple of things here. Number one, for you ladies, God wants you to be treated special. He wants you to have beauty treatments. Yeah, tell you, tell your girlfriend next to you, say, God, God's not, God's not upset with me when I get a new hairdo or get my nails painted or get, oh yeah, no, get my toes done. God's not, oh yeah, he likes me to have special treatment. And you men, you provide that for your woman. I like when my wife comes home and says, look at my toes now. (laughs) And when favor gets on you, watch this. She got seven attendants, and they put her in the best place in the whole harem. And remember, this harem, they were all virgins, just so you get it. Don't let that mind go wild. Oh, harem. Oh, harem. No, these were harem of virgins. Right. Read your Bible. That's right. Amen. They weren't promiscuous. Right. That's right. Come on. We'll save that for another time, right? <laughs> I think so. Because when favor gets on you, you have preferential treatment. Yeah. I want somebody to say Amen. You start expecting that when you drive up to the busy mall during the next holiday season that somebody's pulling out right near the front of the door. That I've heard people say, oh, I don't mind walking. Good, then give up that place for me. That's fine with me. I have a, I'll walk on the treadmill or walk somewhere else, but I ain't walking in the mall like that. Uh-uh. You believe preferential treatment is yours. Come on. You get to a restaurant and there's a 45-minute late uh, wait, and then all of a sudden somebody calls you and say, "Oh, uh, how many are you? Two. Oh, okay, you can come right here to the front of the line. This is preferential treatment. I believe preferential treatment's coming on the body of Christ. I believe special treatment is coming on you. I believe that favor is coming on you. I confess that you are having doors open for you that have been closed in your face from before. I confess today that even you that have bad credit are now establishing good credit. I confess over you that everything in your life is changing and preferential favor and grace and kindness and graciousness is coming on you. Look at verse 15. Verse 15. When the turn came for Esther, the young woman Mordecai had adopted the daughter of his uncle Abihail to go to the king. She asked for nothing other than Haggai, the king's eunuch, who was in charge of the harem, suggested. And Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her. How many Esthers do I have in the room today? Come on, ladies, you ought to put your hand up and say, oh, yeah, favor is coming on me. Yeah, favor is coming. Now, favor has already always been on you, but I'm talking about special favor. I wonder who's going to get in on this special favor today. I wonder who's going to say, yep, that's coming on me. It's coming on me. Special sales bonuses. Things are happening to me. I look to the left and there's goodness. I look to the right and there's mercy. Everything is around me, following me. Favor is over me, around me, on me, through me, for me. (laughs) 
Look at the 17th verse. Now, the king was attracted to Esther more than to any of the other women. She won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. I have a prophetic word for some of the ladies in here today. God is about to move the Vashtis out of your life and move you into a place of prominence and blessing where he crowns you with favor. I want to go off on another tongue here right now. I believe that some of you ladies today are getting warmed up for what God is about to do in your life. How many Esthers do I have in here today? Better get on your feet right now and say, yeah, there's a crown of blessing for me in the future. Mm. Someone in here today is about to experience preferential treatment. God is about to let you stand out from your rivals, from your peers, from the crowd. That brings me to number four, advantage. <laughs> Glory to God. Do you know if you're a frequent flyer, you have what they call advantage miles? Yes. Do you know what advantage miles do for you? Yes. When you show up to the airport, you have a special line for where you get treated special. Yes. You got a special seat on the plane. Yes. You have a special lounge you can go to. Yes. We just don't understand that we're special people. I know somebody's going to say, well, God, 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 God treats everybody equal. Wrong! How come he didn't treat the other people in the harem equal to Esther? No, you stand out in the crowd when favor is on you. You have special advantage, special treatment. I wish somebody would get that. You don't have frequent flyer miles in God. You have frequent faith miles in God. Your faith has brought you to a new place in God where you believe that God is blessing you. Yeah, but Pastor, did you see the reports on the economy? I don't care about the U.S. economy. My economy is not based on what the U.S. does. It's based on what heaven does. And heaven declares blessing over me. Heaven declares provision over me. Heaven declares prosperity over me. Heaven declares health over me. Heaven declares that I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. I'm anointed of the Holy Ghost. I declare and decree today that what heaven says is what I agree with. I don't agree with what earth says about me. Are you with me so far? Yes. Here's what happens when favor gets on you. People ask, how come you got that? What do you answer when they ask you that? Here's what you answer. I got favor on me. You must know something I don't know. Oh, yeah, you got about 10 minutes. Psalm 68, 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily. You, you, do you want to hear this? Who daily. Watch this next word. Loadeth me with benefits. I looked up that word loaded in the Hebrew. Do you know what it means? It actually expresses that you've got so many blessings on you that you have to bend over like this. <laughs> the blessings on you are so, are so big. Actually, another word for it is burden, but not burden, not carrying, I'm carrying a heavy burden. No, no, Bert, you are burden. I got so many blessings on me, I don't know which way to look. He loads me up with blessing. Loads me up, loads me up with blessing. Tell somebody next to you right now, he daily, daily. Everybody say daily, say daily, say daily, say daily, daily. His blessing.
things are new every morning. Every morning. He daily loads me with blessings. Yeah. Let's, let's do it real quick. Do you remember when the children of Israel were traveling in the wilderness? Do you remember when the manna fell? Do you remember what God said it was an injunction on them? You are never to take the manna from Monday and use it for Tuesday. Yes. The money from manna, the, 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 the manna from Monday, rather, is, is to be used only on Monday because it's not, it, it's going to be old and it's going to be wearing out by the time Tuesday comes. And I want you to get this. So every day God loaded them with manna. And every day God loads you with blessings. The Monday blessing is not like the Tuesday blessing. The Wednesday blessing is not like the Tuesday blessing. The Thursday blessing is not, oh, you're not hearing me. He daily loads you with blessings. And the last part of that verse says something powerful. Even the God of our salvation. 